what's up guys, Chris here. So today we are checking out the most underrated bike in Trex Fuel X line, potentially their entire bike line, and that's the Fuel X7. Now they haven't changed much from previous years, and pretty much everything is the same, but we're gonna talk about it anyway, because they're hard to come by. Many people kind of disregard the Fuel X7, go straight to the Fuel X8, or stick down to the Fuel X5, especially with the current part spec of the Fuel X5 is so good in comparison to what it was in previous years. So just like the Fuel X5, you get a 12 speed. This one goes to the SRAM NX instead of the Shimano Dior. Honestly, I think that's probably pretty similar shifting. The benefit with the NX is its compatibility with all that Eagle stuff. So you still have a Shimano hub in there, makes it nice, affordable, you don't need to change too many things, but you could upgrade the shifting units for a relatively low cost to the 12 speed setup and make it so much faster. SRAM does have a lot more increments in the 12 speed gearing range than Shimano does. So it's kind of nice in that way. So the brakes are good on them. They have the BL-M4100. They're gonna have a lot more bite than say the Fuel X5 by a big amount, a larger reservoir, better cooling in them. Overall, you are just gonna get better performance out of these brakes. Remember the Fuel X5 brakes are the same brakes that are on a Marlin 7. So this is a big upgrade. They do not have any routing this year or mount points for the front derailleur. So that is gone. Uh, they got rid of that, I believe, last year or the year before. Either way, you cannot put a front derailleur on here. They have also got rid of the what was the full floater shock. And essentially they're saying the suspension which is coming out today is not necessary to have that additional linkage here. They can cut out a bit of weight to it. Your shock is still gonna be performing really well. Technologies have improved since they brought out the full floater and now got rid of it and gone back to a fixed point. So it's not as necessary. Trek is still one of the only ones with the active braking pivot in the rear. So this allows like an overlie shape and essentially as the suspension collapses, they don't put as much torque or pressure onto the brakes, onto the lowers or uppers as they would. Instead, it's able to allow that flex to dissipate in the rear. If you've seen Trek's ISO speed on the road bikes, I'd liken it a little bit to that where it's just allowing a bit of play in an area which normally wouldn't have that play in a secure way though, not in an uh, uh oh, I broke my bike kind of way. So they've got the new RockShox 35 on here, air fork, 35 mil stanchions, pretty simple there. It's a RockShox, pretty simple there, but otherwise it does not have a model or a name, it is just the RockShox 35. Honestly, they're a little hard to find aftermarket. They are something which comes shipped stock with bikes. Easy to adjust, good to use, and then just a quick compression dial on this side, so you're able to stiffen up or and soften off that compression really easily. And I like the ones which have more of a click to them as opposed to the free ones. They don't feel like you're really doing anything or that you should be stopped halfway. These ones make you known. Yeah, halfway to a ride, you could stiffen it up a little bit. With the Fox on the rear, instead of the rock trucks, you get the standard climb trail descend. So three modes, climb mode makes it very stiff, made for those big long climbs or gravel rides. The trail mode is the one which you'll leave it in most of the time which is where its shock is working and it's kind of most efficient overall. And then you have the descend mode, which really softens up that shock and makes it ready for downhills. But you can definitely feel the bob of it on say something like a gravel ride and you're really trying to get the, the power out. XR4 team issue, which is nice. Uh, these are a 2.4 on the rear and a 2.6 on the front. So going back to what all bikes used to be, which was a bit beefier on the front and a little faster on the back, essentially you gotta get the most amount of traction in the rear, but you gotta have a fast rolling in the back end. You don't need as much traction when going round corners in the rear end. So it's a nice compromise for it. This size is a medium large. I do have an extra large here, which also fits the exact same tire setup to it. Trek still has the knock block to it. They've not got rid of it. Obviously, you may have seen videos from Cam McCall or Brandon Semenuk who have had a little space put in there to allow a full rotation. Obviously, if that's something you're into, put it in, but I don't find any issue with it. The first time you ride it, you may be overthinking it. 
very quickly you forget that your fork can't even go there. I mean, my leg can barely fit between that spot, so it's not like it's gonna have much of a difference to it. Back to the tires, they are tubeless ready, which is cool. They obviously all come with tubes in from the store. Um, so it is something you have to add on after the fact, but it's a pretty easy changeover that way. You're just getting a few little things like your valves and the fluid in there so that it'll actually seal. Um, obviously you have Boost 148 on here in the rear, so you're able to really get a stiff reactive rear end, less flex in the rear wheel, and then allows for those bigger spacings in the back. So the Trek Fuel X7 is definitely one of the most underrated bikes in their entire playbook. They kind of do this to themselves. Honestly speaking, the Fuel X5 is so well per spec with such a low price, it's hard not to just jump on that one. And then when you start going a little bit up the scales, tipping it to going, okay, I want to spend a little more, I want a better bike, you hit this range of bike. But very quickly, you see it's only a small jump more to the Fuel X8, which has honestly an outstanding part spec on it. We're looking at a seven plus thousand dollar carbon bike, but with an aluminum frame and that's it. You know, aluminum rims, aluminum frame. So the Fuel X8 is honestly a very competitive bike in the market. That leaves the Fuel X7 a little undersold. I definitely take this bike seriously. For like 95% of people, the per spec on this is fantastic. You get fast shifting, really good braking. The suspension is outstanding. To get a 35 mil fork now on something like this, again, even four years ago, would have been crazy to hit. So you're getting high performance shocks. You're getting good shifting with easy upgradability. The brakes are good as is, but obviously can always be upgraded. The tires, rims, tubeless ready, you are checking every box you could possibly check in when you're looking for a full suspension. Why not buy it? Really, it's just that teeny price range to the Fuel X8. But unless you're hardcore trail riding every single day, I don't think you'll notice a huge upgrade. So potentially, if this is your first full suspension bike, this is a bike that is gonna last forever, essentially. You don't need to do much with it. You can upgrade parts as you need and have it become a Fuel X8 or better in the future. If you're already on a Fuel X5, no question, skip this one and go to the eight. But overall price point wise, it's a small increase from the five. If you know you're into trail riding, this is a bike where you technically wouldn't need to upgrade again. The wheels, tires, amazing. The shifting is very good on it. The brakes are good on it. There's no worries between any of that. You know, if you're the person who wants the best of the best, you know, who buys a MacBook Pro for no reason other than having the word Pro on it, save up a little more, pay the penalty, and get the Fuel X8. If you're a person who just wants a really good performing bike, which has no issues with it, doesn't really need to be upgraded, but could, the Fuel X7 is really where it's at. If you're looking at a Fuel X5, there's definitely some major improvements to it, which could be done. The brakes are good, but they're definitely not great. The tires and tubes set up, they're good, but they're definitely not great. There's definitely a lot of things about the Fuel X5, although it could be kept forever, which you would notice performance downgrades. With something like this, no matter what bike you're coming from, it'll upgrade. Even from a Fuel X5, it'll feel like an upgrade. Might not be so much worth it, but if you can sell your Fuel X5 for exactly what you paid, which you might be able to right now, buying this for a small price increase is totally worth it. You will notice everything different about this bike. It will perform so much better than the Fuel X5. This checks every box and performance checks them, which is the key difference between a Fuel X5 and a Fuel X7. Everything here, you can really hammer on the trails. You can switch this to low setting and really hammer the downhills with it and never need to change a thing on it. And you're still at a good price point. I couldn't honestly recommend this enough. Um, if you're looking to upgrade any bike, strongly look at the Fuel X7. If you're still unsure about uh, trail riding in general, the Fuel X5 is there for you. And if you know and know for sure all you want is a good high performance bike, go with the Fuel X8 if you've got the money for it. Otherwise, this is your high performance bike on a budget, which makes for a pretty affordable bike, especially again when you compare to like five, six years ago, 
things like all this, a drop of post would have been $700 addition. A 35 mil stanchion would have been unheard of. To get that efficient, that light, that big of a shot, it just wouldn't happen. You'd be looking at an enduro bike, which would cost you more and weigh 10 pounds more. This thing's a light bike. This is actually shockingly light. All right, guys, I hope that helped you with your decision making. Check out my video for the Fuel X5. Also, I recently potentially sold my bike, the Remedy 9.8, and I'm thinking of going back to a Fuel, probably something along the 9.8 line as well. What do you guys think? Is the Fuel a bike you like? Should I stick with something like that instead of a Remedy and see how it goes? Subscribe if you like this. Comment below what bike I should potentially get. And as always, good luck. Oh, 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 o